welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So we had our uh, London uh, Fountain Pen Club uh, in the UK on uh, September the uh, 1st and uh, I wasn't able to uh, take any uh, video footage because it was actually again quite busy um, but uh, I took a load of photos and I thought I would just show some of these off. I've already posted a lot of these to my uh, Instagram channel but uh, I thought I would actually give a little bit more of a narrative uh, behind these photos and how these pens worked. So um, as I said we met on Saturday the 1st of September uh, at Beer Schenke, which is our usual uh, hangout place for the London uh, UK Fountain Pen Club. Um, got to meet a lot of my uh, good uh, pen friends um, uh, and a lot of them brought uh, a lot of new pens that I have never tried before. Uh, I also um, brought uh, a lot of uh, pens with me as well. Uh, a lot of my Viscontis, my Armando Simone Club uh, pens and uh, you'll see a few of these uh, in a little bit. So the first pen I got to try was actually a pen from uh, Ali, a uh, good friend, um, and um, she had a new pen which was a Pilot Custom Heritage 92 in a medium nib. Now I haven't tried uh, any uh, of the Pilot Custom pens outside of my um, Pilot Custom 823s that have the FA nib. Uh, I did get to try some medium and broad nibs of the 823, but I have never been able to try a pen outside of the 823 range, at least as I recall. So I was actually um, really glad that I got to, to uh, try this new pen from Ali, and I was actually quite surprised. It's actually a really lovely writer, and to me, it actually wrote a little bit more like a broad nib, so I was really glad that I was able to give that a try. Uh, there was also a, another new member that, that came to the club, uh, John uh, Orange Brompton, and uh, he brought his lovely coned bulk filler um, that I asked if he could bring with him. And uh, this uh, is the um, the the Colnid Bulk Filler uh, King Size model, which is actually a model that I've been looking at trying to get for a while. But it just keeps slipping down my wish list because there are more limited edition pens that, that keep coming up. This was in the Titanium Fine Nib. And... Uh, it wrote really well, and and I was uh, I liked the weight, I liked the size, uh, I liked the nib. Although uh, you might be able to see here on the writing example on my notepad on the top here, this is a fine nib, a titanium nib, and it's feathering. Um, I can't remember what what ink was was in this pen, but um, this wasn't um, Tomoe River paper. It was uh, Taroko Orchid paper, which is very similar. And I've not had any feathering on this paper, so it just goes to show how how wet this this nib is. Um, Ali also actually uh, brought another pen that she uh, picked up at the Washington DC Super Show recently, which is a, a lovely, lovely pen. Um, and um, it's a, uh, a pen from a company called 18111, or 18111. Uh, and uh, this is a, a gorgeous pen. And Ali was saying that the, the pen is actually turned and then cutouts are made for those feathers and then they're actually painted in so you really don't feel that the feathers are raised uh, there's a slight texture difference because of the paint on the feathers compared to the rest of the body but I love that uh, chatoyance on, on that, that body um, and it came with a Jovo nib um, and uh, she had that inked up with uh, Pelican Smoky Quartz and, and that was a, a lovely lovely um, pen and I do like Jovo nibs, I do like those a lot uh, and then uh, Gary uh, Dapperman brought along his Conway Stewart Churchill, and uh, uh, this is a, a new uh, acquisition that he made recently. Um, and uh, this is a Bespoke British Pens version, uh, and it was a broad nib. And and I have all of my Churchills are uh, medium nibs at, at present, but I have a Series 100 in a broad nib. And I do actually prefer the broad nib, and I, I've been seriously thinking about swapping those out at some point. So that might be something that I, I will do as well. But again, that's a gorgeous uh, Conway Stewart Churchill. Uh, he got it for a very good price as well. Uh, I also uh, managed to to um, uh, 
play around with a uh, lovely Omas uh, Ojiva in the Burkina. Uh, and this was from, from Terry Holt that, that came. And um, uh, Terry has a lot of lovely pens. And it, it was really great to see Terry uh, once again. Um, if there's any, any person that has pens that I really, really want, it's Terry. And... Um, so he had some, as I said, some lovely Omasis, some lovely Viscontis, and you'll see a few more of these. But this Burkina is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I think a lot of the online pictures really do not do the Burkina um, uh, like celluloid justice. But it's it's just like black and yellow with with like black lines or dots uh, in the material swirled around. It, it is an absolute stunning pen. So, again, I, I really like this. And he had this uh, inked up with, uh, I think it was Colorverse. Um, but it, it's a lovely 18-carat gold nib. And then uh, Terry blew my mind. <laughs> he brought the Visconti Carbon Dream. And, oh, this this was a 1.3 millimeter stub. Which of course Terry knows I love a lot. I love the 1.3 millimeter stubs, and and this this is really a, a little bit similar to the watermark uh, from Visconti, but it's that the Carbon Dream is actually ha in, instead of having uh, like a um, silver with palladium coated uh, overlay, it, it's a or plating. It's a um, a carbon uh, um, a plating or overlay, and um, so so the 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 Carbon Dream is is a really really gorgeous pen and it it does actually uh, this is a pen that i've looked at for some time and i really would love to add to my collection maybe one day i will um it, it wrote spectacularly just just as most of my viscontis do uh, i know a lot of people bang on about qc issues about visconti i've had a few issues here or there not a huge amount uh, and to be honest, I've had uh, just as much issue with any other manufacturer if I have enough pens from them. So, so I I've really not had any major issues um, with Visconti that that I would start to bash the brand like like some people do, and a lot of people bash the brand without buying any. But the Visconti Dream, uh, the Carbon Dream here is is a, a stunning stunning pen. Uh, and uh, I, I actually then photographed it right next to my watermark. I nearly didn't bring my watermark with me, and I'm so glad I did because you can see side by side these two pens do look gorgeous. And it is a little bit longer than the watermark, um, but I, I think I think this actually makes me want to add it to my collection even more now. <laughs> But uh, such a, a stunning pen uh, from Terry. And then Terry completely blew my mind because he then brought out the Visconti Torpedo. And again, this is another pen that I have been seriously thinking of adding to my collection. It is a gorgeous pen. Um, I do like it. And again, it's carbon fibre, but it's a single one-way weave and not like the cross-hash weave, which is more common. So it actually takes a lot more um, uh, failure rate to actually manufacture these because um, not all of the material will, will work out for pen. So um, in that, with that in mind, it actually makes it more of a, a lovely pen. And, and I I really do like that, and uh, I actually Terry had a medium nib on on this pen, um, and then I do do a lot of medium nibs. Um, I thought the step down on the section would have really um, caused issues for me because I don't like big step downs, but to be honest, I wasn't holding it high enough for it to to cause a problem. So I actually did like did like the pen, and and again, it's still a pen that I would love to add to my collection. Um, Terry also then um, brought out a uh, Jack Rowe pen, uh, which was really, really lovely. Um, got to play with that one as well. Um, and then also an Omar's Milord uh, Vision. And uh, again, this is a, a... I absolutely love the Milords. I love the size. Uh, and uh, the, I only have one Milord, the Arco Brown Milord, in my collection. 
but it white super wet and uh this this uh milord uh terry had inked up with um diamine meadow and and again this was a really really um a lovely writer so um uh, it actually makes me want to get more omos pens because um the nibs do write really well and then <laughs> <laughs> if that wasn't enough hurt, Terry brought out his right here now Scribo 2. Now, I'm actually quite thankful that Terry didn't bring the two new pens from Scribo. Um, so there's two Scribo 2s. There's uh, this one in Noble Green, and then there's one in Cardinal Red. And um, so uh, this one was uh, in a medium... Um, uh, extra flex nib and it wrote gorgeous it's a 14 count nib uh and it really makes me want to get one and um i really really uh i think for the for the money for the price for that pen um it is grail territory it's uh retails at 450 pound but from trying Terry's pen I really did love how that wrote and um, uh, I, th I think I might have to add that to my collection very soon um, and then um, uh, we actually decided that uh, we, we started playing around people were, were looking and, and ogling over my um, uh, Armando Simone Club Arco Verdes because I bought four of the Bologna Arco Verdes with me. I also brought my um, uh, Arco Bronze Bologna uh, and my uh, ASC Ajiva Tribute, uh, the Milord Arco Brown, the Paragon Arco Brown. So um, thankfully Thomas uh, had actually uh, come. He didn't come to the pen club last month, but he did come this month. And he also brought a couple of his uh, Omos Arcos as well. So at that point, we decided, hey, or I decided, hey, let's try and get a photo opportunity. So I start lining up my Bolognas, and then Thomas then starts adding his, and then Terry starts adding his Burkina and the Milord. And then we just have this completely insane oh and then there was a a couple more uh paragons it, it just it just became uh, an insane photo opportunity or photo op so uh we just decided like we had to do it and then suddenly like everybody was gathering around taking photos of of, of these pens um and uh it was it was a really really gorgeous so so there was a the the the, the two on the right after the burkina is the omas uh, paragon from thomas and um the uh omas paragon wood so um uh, which is the uh the, the the right hand one is the italiana the the larger version of the uh, uh arte, arte italiana um of, of the omas paragon so um it was a really, really uh, good day. Uh, I also got to try one of these uh, Helix pens as well from Gary Dapperman. He brought that as well, uh, and that was actually quite nice. Um, and um, that was a Kickstarter project, and that had a 1.1 uh, stub nib on it. Uh, and I also got to uh, test a, a Rembrandt that um, Rupert brought along as well. Um, so it was a really, really good day. And then I also took a whole load of my pens with me. Like I had a lot of my Viscontis, like the Bronze World, the London Fog, um, the, the, the Homo Sapiens Evolution, the Medici or Magnifico, some of the Stack Celluloids as well, the Camelot, uh, and then obviously all of my uh, Arcos that I had there, um, my Speakeasy, my uh, Luxor, and, and an Opus 88. So... Uh, it was a really, really good um, uh, meet, and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. And this is one thing I really do like about going to pen clubs. Uh, everybody, uh, at least from my experience, have always been uh, very friendly, um, at least the, the people that want to talk to you and want to share their pens. And and uh, I, I really uh, do enjoy them. Uh, I, I love going to these pen clubs. Uh, if you haven't been to a pen club before, definitely try and get yourself off to one if there is one 
uh, local to you or even if it takes an hour or so drive it, it's it's definitely worth going because you can get to test out a lot of new pens that you wouldn't normally test uh, uh, or be able to test uh, and then change your mind on what type of pens that you want to buy and, and add to your collection in future so that was it that was our London UK Phantom Pen Club for September 2018 thanks for watching please like comment subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video Bye-bye.